Our guest today is Prachi Nadkarni. We competed in the same tennis circuit back in the day. And today I wanted to talk to her about her self-awareness and growth towards the best version of herself. Hi, Prachi. Thank you so much for taking the time out for this. <laughs> Hi. It's so nice to see you after, I don't know, 16, 15, 17, <laughs> something number of years. So it's so nice to be here. Thank you. Um, the feeling is mutual. So my very first question that I'm curious about is, how did you stumble upon this journey? Because like I told you, I started my own journey also. And it's been, I think, around a year, a little over a year. And <clears throat> it is such a liberating process for me. So I want to know how you came across this. So I've always been a spiritual person. Honestly, I don't, I don't even like to call it that. It was like, I always believed in something higher than, not higher than, like something greater than this like physical world that we see. So I always had this curiosity about like what was out there. Um, who am I? Like all these questions were there since I was a kid, as far as I remember. Um, and I feel like this journey basically, it's it's always a part of the the growth process of who you are. So there's this point in this in, in in your life in my life there were many many different points what we would call is traumas or like things that really shake you up and a lot of times they keep repeating themselves in different patterns so it's like different people different faces different situations but the the internal like whatever causes it is the same and after a while you start questioning you know the, the why is the same like I noticed that this is happening over and over again so that sort of started happening to me and I really sat down one day because introspection I feel like is so necessary to to figure anything out and I was I going to get the answers probably not but I was wanting to know um why is this happening again and again so I do believe, though, that if you ask the questions, the answers come to you in all different <laughs> ways and forms. So I already had uh, interest in that. I'd already read a lot about that. So basically, when I started asking the questions, I started getting people in my life who would answer that for me or it would be shown to me in different ways. And the more I saw that that process works for me, the more I believed in it. Right. So I kept doing it again and again. And um Finally, I think that really where, and it's like, a, it's like an alarm clock, you know, you press snooze that many times, um, but it's going to keep coming at you until you really want to see it. Um, so I felt like there was, I think 2020, start of 2020 was when I was actually like, oh, like I, I can't run away from this anymore. I've tried to, um, or I've not really embraced it fully. You know, I've not really invested that much in it. And when I decided that, no, I want to make changes and I want to see what I need to see. Um, and I want to learn from this process and grow and, and do something different at this point. That's when the right people started coming into my life. And I, I met who I call like my mentor, my, my sister, I call her ma, like so many different things. And she really is a, a guide, like a mirror to me. And I did this uh, mindfulness course with her uh, for 21 days. And all it was, was just integration of how do you be mindful? How do you really, truly be yourself? Uh, the real self, not the, the facade that you usually are used to showing to the world, right? How do you do that day in, day out in different practices here, like at work, at things that you do every single day? So that was the course that I, wow, it, it really, um, I could see the changes in myself and the way I viewed the world. And that that's where like my other experiences started. So that's how I stumbled upon it. Hit uh, a rock bottom. As in, I was feeling very, very sad and depressed about a lot of things. Was not in a happy relationship. I was not happy about my weight. Um, I don't even remember what else was wrong, but at the time I thought everything <laughs> was wrong in my life. So I just rolled down, you know, what would make me happy? So prob probably clearing an exam, probably breaking up with someone, probably losing a certain amount of weight. So I, I thought, what's in my control? You know, let's start off with being healthy. You know, I was a tennis player. Why am I unhealthy at the moment? Why am I unfit? You know, why? I know what to do. I mean, I don't even need to research on it. I know what to eat, what to work out. You know, why? Yes. Why? You know, then I told, I <laughs> told myself, 
do not crib about it if you want to do something about it you do but stop crying about it and keep thinking i'm unfit i'm unfit i'm unfit and go around partying with people and having beers not happening so then i put a schedule and luckily lockdown helped very much because there was nothing to yes. do in or dine out but i i just i just turned into a different person and all those people in my life are not even most of them are not even there in my life anymore it's it's on you know it's 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 so on point because i feel like yeah a lot of us get this hit or this jolt and 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 wake up as we call it you know like the, the millennials or my man i don't know like, like oprah says the aha moment <laughs> yeah the aha moment or like um you know when you wake up uh, it's like you get hit by all these traumas usually i don't think it's necessary to get to that point it's just all the generation generational conditioning that's been a part of us for so long that kind of just you don't think most people don't think like i feel like the life that i lived from when i was a kid to you know even 20 21 25 even was just like it was just like living it was just every day i wake up i do stuff like you know i'm just like not even putting any thought into what i'm doing like what makes me happy what makes me unhappy none of that stuff i mean sure there were parts when i had to sit and think about it if something as you said if a relationship wasn't working out then you sit and you're like okay what's wrong you know uh that kind of stuff and um it's sad that it it usually ends up coming from trauma it doesn't have to be like that so um that's all to get like a different topic but um and and you also said that it's funny how you know the people that you used to hang out with are not a part of your life anymore and that makes complete sense to me and i feel like that is it's a tricky situation because most people want to hang on to that they're like oh no they're my friends like you know how do i how do i manage relationships and i harpersen went through that as well because i was like okay all the wounding showing up now i want i want to keep all these friends like i want to be the people pleaser that you know meets people where they're at um but one i lose my power when i do that when i say power i don't mean it from like a dominating power sense it's just who i am like the Sorry, essence of who identity. i am subconscious exactly. identity with with the kind of friendships and the relationships that you have yeah um identity also the word i use very carefully because the identity is something that we've created over time so if you see my identity technically could have been the prachi that was 20 something to you know 27 um that used to do the same thing that was my identity but then i had to kind of basically change my identity if i wanted to truly accept myself the way i was because my identity at that point was something that i hadn't even put that much thought into so it was just created by childhood conditioning like what i saw in the papers you know like for example simple example like beauty standards like whoever just i i keep talking about that but like my identity was like oh i'm not good enough because i don't look like i don't I'm, i don't meet these standards you know what i mean but then i'm like no i just you have to break away from that and like truly be who you are so that's the kind of shift i've been making and uh the losing people part i look at it as different rooms like in a building imagine like every room is labeled something so it's if you think about it like as a vibration from 0 0 being low vibration so like sad angry depressed upset uh, jealous all that stuff and and the higher like 10 being um you know happy peaceful joyous uh embracing whatever it is right love um and you it's like when you're when you're holding the frequency of that like i'm not good enough and like you know whatever it is that the trauma is that you're dealing with you're in those like lower rooms expecting to meet people who are in the higher rooms it doesn't work like that because you can't even see them you might bump into them in the hallway but you know that's about it um so that's definitely when you start work that's with that analogy really nice yeah i put really thought into this yeah yeah absolutely because like then you um then you're thinking about so the, so when you start working on yourself i also like to call it loving on yourself because that's what you're doing right when you start seeing yourself for who you are that's a form of self love that most people ignore but um when you start start loving on yourself working on these different things about yourself you you 
kind of like move through the rooms. You're like, okay, cool, I'm done with this. And you're moving on to see what's up there, right? So now suddenly you're in like room nine, room 10, room seven, on a bad day, room five. And you're not meeting the people anymore because they're not ready or they're not perhaps not ready for who you are. And that's fine. It's not like that's a bad thing. It's their journey and they have to figure it out. So that's just how I've been looking at it and saying, okay, cool. It's not like I don't need to feel rejection. When you come to this conclusion, the amount of peace you feel is is unexplainable. (laughs) Oh, it's it's immense because initially you you take the blame, right? Because you're like, did I do something wrong to lose these people? Like, I'm just trying to be myself. And a lot of my friends, uh, well, people in my life, I should say, were thought that I had changed or like I was doing things differently. I was being different. Um, and I was like, yeah, well, I, I don't want to be the same person that I was when I was 18. Like it, it just, it, there, there has to be some growth. And I don't believe in like going and saying this to everyone, like personally saying like, oh, look, I've changed now and, and I'm doing this different. Like, no, that's not how it um but people notice the difference people notice the change and some appreciate that there's some connections that have come back into my life like you I haven't spoken to you in so long but we're in the same room now so it's because and and then you reconnect with those people so you know it's like oh if I'm reconnecting like there's something out there and you come to that mutual understanding but same holds for people who just like fall away because I stopped believing that it was my fault. I stopped believing that I had to, um, that I was rejected, that I wasn't good enough to be their friend or whatever. Those are the stories that I grew up like telling myself when people moved away. But then I was like, no, it's not, it's not like that. Now that you're in higher rooms, when you look at people who are suffering or in pain or not aware, we tend to sympathize or empathize a lot and we we take it seriously right like you want to advise them towards the right path Mm. but because they they think it's too serious or we might come across as too philosophical you know like you know why is she taking everything so seriously you know you can just chill and relax you know tomorrow is a new day etc how do you feel about it do you still constantly want to you know as much as you can not like go out of your way or anything but yeah I feel like I used to do that, okay? I used to be like, no, I want to help you. And then I realized that... Uh, they got to be it's ready. Not, it's not mine to fix. And there's nothing to fix. Everyone's exactly where they're supposed to be. So when I say higher rooms, I don't mean to create like a distinction or separation of like, I'm higher, you're lower, or anything like that. No, I just mean I like different people like that. I I I understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just mean like different rooms, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I I feel like every person is exactly where they're meant to be. Because without going through that experience, they're not going to see the things and learn the things that they must in order to evolve in their own soul journey. So if they're in this point like upset, depressed, sad. I, w- I was at some point, like I was, uh, I had uh, uh, dealt with depression. There were days when I just didn't, didn't want to move. There were days when I moved too much. Nobody knew and I didn't want to tell anyone because that's how it is. Like you show this facade on the outside that no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. Um, do I feel upset? For sure. You can hold space for these people, for, for our friends and family who are suffering or who are going through something like that. You hold space. I don't, to, to work with energetics, you don't need words. Advising is something I absolutely don't do unless I'm asked for my opinion. Because um, firstly, I don't know if you're familiar with human design, but I'm a projector and it means that I've, this is something I learned about myself and it's new to me. So I'm just like learning more and more. But basically when I give advice to someone, let's say I give advice to you and you don't follow it, I get bitter. And that's a part of my design. I don't want to be bitter, but I'm like, crap, like I wasted my time. And it's like talking to a wall. If you're not ready, you're just like speaking and speaking. And, and then you're like, why am I doing this? Uh, also, you don't need to fix anyone. Everyone's fine the way they are. It's things 
being in your vibration itself can be uplifting for people if you're holding it. It's like if this is a power button and you're in the center of it, that's where you are fully embracing who you are, right? And then there's all these other people on the side. And when they feel are, the same vibrations, they will come closer to you, like 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 how we got back in touch or something. Is that what you mean? Uh, I mean it in two different ways. Where I was going with that was that usually what happens is when we see people who are upset, depressed, whatever it is, the other feelings, we tend to move away from our room and say, wait, wait, I'm coming to yours. I'm stepping out of my power. But now you, this is who you are. You're in the center. This is who you are. The minute you're stepping out, it's like unplugging yourself. So you don't have the energy to hold that anymore. You don't have the capacity to hold that anymore because you're literally like unplugging your energy and you're meeting other people where they're at. And that's why relationships sometimes don't work out with friends, family, or like romantic relationships because we're trying to constantly meet people where they're at, which means that we're working on like, like, borrowed time and you're not plugged into your teacher. honest to yourself to be fully honest to yourself and to them you need to be plugged in otherwise you're doing a disservice even to them because you're not going going into like lower vibrational like uh going into being sad with someone is not helping them because you're now you're sad together you're not really up uplifting them. It's, you know what I mean? Is that supportive? Yeah, in that moment, it feels supportive because it's like, oh, look, they're sad for me, with me. And you can hold that space for them to be sad, but you don't have to be sad with them. That's that's that's, right, that's right. how I look. Very at it. interesting perspective. Like this, this is new to me. The kind. But when I asked you that question, I only meant if they seek your help, not like you go out of your way if they don't ask for oh. it. You know what I mean? Um. And also, I've, I've met uh, the, a category of people who read these kind of stuff, who probably watch some podcasts, listen to them. They know the theoretical stuff of it, but some conversation, you give a different perspective, they tend to get very defensive about it, as in they don't practice what they actually read or learn. So how do you feel about um, facing those kind of situations? Mm. Um, I feel like unless you implement the knowledge that you have you're not making truly creating your own experiences i've definitely in the past probably especially in the beginning uh you know kind of like reiterated what i read in a book or whatever and it sounded cool like it was like okay she, she you know she knows what she's talking about but if i hadn't implemented that in my daily life um it's not it's not do it's like I'm not sure of myself in that moment I'm just saying things so the minute somebody comes and says something else it's like they're attacking me they're challenging me it's like and also I've noticed that in our community sometimes the minute everyone is coming from the conditioning of wanting to compete and wanting to be better because we were taught that you know I mean we grew up in India we know we know exactly what that it's it's that way everywhere basically but like um competitiveness was like oh you have to work better you have to be first like you have to you know strive for all this stuff so the minute someone comes in like challenges you or shows a different perspective you feel like it's a personal attack it's like as if you wrote the book <laughs> And then I realized, well, I didn't write the book. I didn't even own the experience. So then why am I getting so defensive? It's like, th that's what I started thinking about. And then I realized that I was taking it so personally because I felt like I needed to be right. And the minute they offer a different perspective, they're claiming I'm wrong. And that's my ego. That's nothing but my ego. And the minute I recognized that, I was like, oh, it's not about me though. It's, there, it's a different perspective. This is how I feel. And it's an opinion. It's not a fact by any means because everyone's lenses are different and everyone looks at the way the world uh, differently. So you could have, you and I could enter like a same room of amazing people and have completely different experiences. So how do I, who am I to judge your experiences in that moment? You know, that understanding and awareness itself was like, okay, cool. Even if, I don't vibe with this person that's fine we can just coexist and still be okay <laughs> true that's very true 
uh, before you started this journey how did you deal with your negative energy and like around you or within yourself and what's different now how do you deal with it now oh i used to get mad <laughs> so i um uh, i used to get sucked in you know to everything so my biggest traumas that i feel or so i had a lot of like fear of a bad so basically i used to go into either people pleaser so if somebody like people could boss over me super easily because i would want to please them because underlying somewhere in there it was this fear of abandonment that it picked up along the way so i'm like you know what i don't care how you you you're behaving with me i just want you to be in my life so i'm going to do anything i can to just have you here and that means really just stretching um who i was being who i wasn't a very uncomfortable spot Not um about i i happiness not worrying about your own happiness not worrying about myself at all forget happiness was like a far fetched concept was i happy sure i was like joyous on a day to day like you know i've always been pretty bubbly so um that was there but i didn't even think about it i was like no no my only goal in life right now is to keep this friend in my life so what do i do um so really it, i didn't uh i came more from i'm not a i'm i'm not a very angry person generally like i haven't had that much anger but i go into self doubt and self judgment about things so um i used to take things everything personally everything was about me i was so selfish <laughs> in in that way if you go to think about it i used to be like oh wow um uh, and and that used to i used to internalize things so uh i wouldn't if i got mad i would i would go into my room and slam my door but i wouldn't like say words to people and i think that is a lot of suppression of emotions um uh, now i realized and that's also actually is funny thing is coming up that it's the inner child that we suppress right because when we're kids uh, when we're children we're asked to when we're adults especially we're asked to not be uh, childish but we don't realize that there's a difference between being childish and childlike uh the inner child is always present in us and because of the suppression of emotions from a younger age what happens is when you're growing up and you feel all this like anger and you the only way you know to throw like only way you know to bring it out is by throwing a tantrum because you suppressed it for so long you're going to explode you know uh but then when i started this journey and like was looking more into myself i realized that there's a wise way of bringing out any kind of emotion you know does that take practice yeah <laughs> like does that take so i i used to do like specific meditations i actually worked with one of my friends jason and he's he's wonderful he helped me um help me um do this meditation uh and the meditation was to feel your emotions because i used to be completely toxic positive if anything uh, a few years ago but i was like no no everything's well and like i'm not i don't have any emotions other than happiness which is not true um so basically to clear all the the little you know muck that was sitting inside of me at the bottom somewhere where i suppressed it we used to tap into my anger or tap into any whatever emotion that i had suppressed so we would actually go into meditation to get mad to get upset to get you know whatever it is that I was feeling and it sounds counterintuitive right like it sounds like if you're going to meditation you want to be peaceful like why are you like no because then i needed to activate the different uh, energy centers and like release it from inside of me i don't need to hold on to anything because once all that muck is cleared up and cleared out then you have a clean glass of water you don't have the the settled uh, sedimentation like down so once all that is done then you're able to feel your emotions more clearly so if you get angry you're not throwing a tantrum anymore exactly what's going on and you're able to process words and like speak them or you can find different ways like dance or creative like forms play tennis right for example go to the gym lift some weights like whatever it is you find creative ways of bringing out your anger now you know that when i'm mad i have confidence in myself that i'm not going to throw my phone at someone's face 
like <laughs> is that, did i want to do that in the past yeah no, i did yeah. I, I, that I, so. I, I had to replace many iphones so i get where you're coming from <laughs> it's like yeah but now you're sure of yourself you're like no yeah. i'm i have the the power and the wisdom to bring this emotion out of me through grace and elegance and sometimes it's not that way and that's okay i have i can still do it um you know in a way that's not like detrimental to myself and others so that's how i look at it. how do you keep your inner child happy now well she's very happy at the moment um so i made a commitment to her and i bought myself um my little i have a unicorn stuffed toy um i allow myself to do things that is that is just a symbol of my relationship with her because when i reconnected with my inner child there was a lot of processing a lot of emotions a lot of like ups and downs in the entire like couple of weeks months um now i make sure to check in with her from time to time every day actually and i allow myself to do things that she likes to do like drawing outside the lines literally on paper um uh, i it's interesting because you might think that's so easy but for me it wasn't because i was so boxed up I was like no no we call it OCD call it whatever label but it's like you you need to be inside the lines you need to be neat and clean but no allow allow the child to play i dance a lot a lot every day so i literally have like time slot and i'm like nope i'm going to dance now it's my dance time so there's a lot of different ways in which you can um keep in touch with your inner child and also just the awareness that you know as i said before uh being being connected with your inner child does not make you childish and and that itself is like enough to say okay i'm more comfortable doing this uh now that you're more aware of um uh self care and loving yourself or whether or not you're happy uh did this change in your personality affect your career like did you need to change career paths or did you question yourself if you were happy in the career path that you were or not how how did that go about cuz i it just comes from the fact that i had to literally turn a 180 degree turn in my career like i had no idea why i started what i did no idea what i'm doing in the job what i'm supposed to do in the job i'm here for the sake of it in a very yeah. good company in a very good career but the minute i'm dreading to go to office every single day i'm like is this really what i want to do but then also late 20s is it really the right time to start figuring yourself out then i'm like when you realize that you want to figure yourself out doesn't matter your age it's the right time whenever you want to do it and so yeah i had to change a whole lot of things is it so close to home <laughs> i i do i think i just stumbled upon my career just because i was like oh you know cool um i told you i wasn't thinking when i was in my like 17 18 20 when you're deciding that career move i really was just doing whatever was easy whatever was easy whatever other people were doing right um and then i got into a place do i do i want to do this i'm also in a weird spot because i live in the us on a on a visa so i'm like kind of tied by law to my job right so i'm like oh wow if i want to change everything do i have to like change countries do i have to go back do i have to, i don't know like it's a big question mark in my head and honestly do i have all the answers no um i just realized one thing is that i didn't want to be in a place where i was defining my happiness by reaching for things outside of me meaning that i'll be happy when i change my career am i happy in my career i don't know is it something i love doing probably not you know i i i get that and i accept that and i admit that but i also know that i can find a place here where when i'm doing the self loving the the self figuring out the laying of the vision that i have for my dream career whatever it is um the breadcrumbs will come along the way and i you have to fully trust and surrender in that it's like booking a plane ticket it's like when you book the plane ticket you have the plane ticket and you know where you're going <laughs> then you don't keep questioning like oh did the plane get canceled did the plane like not is it no is it going still you know you don't do that so so what i've done now and this is my 
this is my plate because do I have definitive answers? No, this is where I'm uh, finding my own path and like experiencing like, oh, like what shows up next? Like, you know, so this is again, unknown territory for me, which is exciting in a way, because if it was known then I would have still been like complacent in the same job and doing the same stuff. Have I changed my jobs? No, because I didn't, I didn't like, there was a lot for me to think about. And that would again, drive me into spiral overthinking spinning without any actual solutions so to say so as you you started the call with like yes I'm going to do what's within my control at the moment and there's a lot of things that I don't know that I'm going to trust because I've done enough to know that I trust there is something working in my favor so in this moment and also like I've read way too much neuroscience <laughs> to figure out I'm like oh you know what I can create this this is something I create because if I believe that I create my own life uh, physiologically at this earthly everything here um then what's a career then it's like cool so I'm working backwards I always work backwards to start off with the vision in my head and then I find my parts along the way go with the flow so that's that's where I'm at right now I'm like, oh, also finding it also teaches you grace and like being happy where you're at, meaning I stop complaining. I stop waking up in the morning every day and saying like, oh, God, I hate my job. Do I still do that occasionally? Yeah, <laughs> it's OK to do that sometimes, you know, when you have a rough day, it's like it's fine. Uh, learning to be OK with that was also process. So it's it's a lot of different flavors of things that's going on but um but I'm, I'm happy that it's I'm finding ways to be myself at the job because in a corporate world being yourself is difficult very <laughs> extremely because because competition and like the drive and the minute you you know you talk about like more teamwork or more like I'm not into competing though like I'm just, I just want everyone to be their best. Literally, like, I just, I just never had that drive. Why do you think tennis, like, didn't work out for me in that moment? Like, because I just, I just didn't have that drive inside of me. And I always questioned it. I thought that was a big flaw that I had. I was literally told, you're not competitive enough. You know what I mean? And I was like, I know that. And I'm sad. And I'm sorry that I'm not competitive. <laughs> oh, God. But it was like, it was a very difficult part that I, to, I had to embrace about myself is that I literally wanted both of us to win. I'm like, oh, well, this single and just the, the drive and like the, all of that stuff started becoming more pressure than fun. And I started playing tennis for fun when I was five. I was like, oh, this is fun. I want to do it more. And the minute that it was all about winning and losing and like pressure and, and people talking about, and it, and yeah it just it was like I don't like this anymore it's not fun uh same at the the corporate job it's it's like the minute you're pressurizing yourself to like do 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 and like go 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 the whole time it's not fun anymore so if I'm finding ways now to be myself even if people don't like there's a difference between being appropriate so I'm not going to start talking energy in the middle of the room like <laughs> But but just generally being myself, um, not wanting to please everyone. If there's, if there's a room full of competitive people and you want to grow together and there's a different energy in the room, how are you being true to yourself in, in that moment? Keeping yourself it's happy. Not, it's, not, it's not easy. It takes a lot of um, figuring out because 90% of the people in that room are competitive and like... And I'm honestly, I'm still figuring that piece out because I tend to get a lot in my head when that happens. I kind of close off and that's the part I'm figuring out about myself. Like, you know, um, it's, I, I do still believe that the energy, the frequency that you're holding, it's like, it's almost like creating a, a little wall. It's like a cocoon that you create. So people who are vibing with that, like they kind of like enter your cocoon just a bit. And uh, with the other people, you can still coexist because you can understand where they come from. So you're not judging them at that point because there's no spiritual high ground here, by the way. 
because I've seen a lot of that in the quote unquote like spiritual community where everyone's like, oh, I I I do yoga and I meditate. So I'm like, I'm I'm better than you are. You know, I've seen a lot of that stuff as well. But it's not like that. It's just the different journeys. And I feel like when you start doing all this work on yourself, you are aware of where that competition is coming from. You've been there yourself. So um, you see people where they're coming from and that develops a different kind of understanding. So you're not like pushing them. You're not like, oh, I can't, I, I just cannot deal with this person. No, it's like, I get it. We're different and we can work together. We can coexist. Am I going to be best friends with them? Probably not. Am I going to go to dinners with them? Maybe a few times to be cordial and like, because I have to. Uh, and I can still have fun conversations with them. I can still talk sport and baseball and NFL. I can still uh, do all of those things. I don't always have to, you know, like that is still being myself. I still like sport, right? I still like cinema. I still like, so yeah, I, I, I do find a way of like coexisting with grace and like happiness over there as well. Does this different personality uh, affect your career growth in any way? Or does that, and if it does, does that affect you personally? I feel like it has in the past few years. And that was something I was figuring out because um, I, I felt that disconnect, especially in the first two years when I started like this whole, um, I mean, Love I told you I started being more consistent started being more consistent uh in 2020 but even before that I, I of course was like flowing into this right so I felt the major disconnect of like where I was in terms of my journey and where they were and like where so I created the separation of like like no like I'm not like this and, and it was frustrating it was horrible and um my promotion got delayed and that created even more frustration for me because I was like what then it started playing into my wounds you know it's like am I not good enough like am I not intelligent enough like what is it about me um do they do they see me as someone who's laid back like you know what is it uh because when everyone even in team meetings talks about their their hobbies and stuff like I'm talking about different things from them and I'm like oh that's weird so I created the separation between us um in the first two years and it was difficult definitely affected my career in that way but I'm at this spot now where I realized that I needed that to be able to be where I'm at today in terms of my awareness in terms of knowing that um it doesn't need to affect my flow of everyday life of my career at all it, it just doesn't need to so if I hadn't gone through that experience though I would still be struggling like with the whole disconnect thing. So uh, definitely took that away. And right now where I'm at, I'm just like, I feel like I'm in a much better spot, actually. I can have whole conversations with people that I'm not even like vibing with. Does that seem fake? No, because I'm not being fake. I'm being genuine. We're just talking about different things. You may be curious, uh, you genuinely may be interested in what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And and at the end of the day, like we all live in the same world and it's all similar experiences. Yeah, the kind of conversations you have, you can have uh, energetically. So again, as I mentioned, um, in the last year, a lot of people were like talking about COVID, watching the news day in, day out um, and talking about like, oh, the death rate has increased. And, and um, it's serious. It's... Um, you do have to take precautions. You do have to do all this. But it's very real. COVID is real. Yes, I agree. But you can't perpetuate just being that constant like fear because you're not helping yourself or your immune system when you're in that state. So um, how do I create the energetic space for them and me to be having these conversations but not it's, it's not about having the conversation. It's how long you perpetuate it. And that's with any emotion. When you go through a breakup or you experience something that is upsetting, you experience emotion. So I'm sad, I'm upset, I'm mad, whatever it is. It's completely fine to feel that. Actually, you should feel that. You should embrace that, right? You're human. You're here to experience that. The, not problem, but I want to look for another word, but like the, the, thing that most people do though is depends on how long you perpetuate it and then if it's you can do it for two days you can do it for two years or like 
two decades, right? And that creates like your personality over time. So you didn't grow, you, you weren't born happy or sad or anything. It just like happened, right? Um, so I think that perpetuation of whatever you're holding is, is what really, so can you hold energetic space to have conversation with someone where you're speaking about whatever it is day to day, but also like moving away from it? Can you do that? That's when you were talking about the competitiveness, I wanted to share that um, tr tennis has been one of my um, traumatic events in my life. And I didn't even realize it till, till I started this journey. I, d I don't even remember most of my tennis days or coaching days or, or my family time when, when I had That's something cool. going. I, I just knew airports, hotels, other players that I'm interacting with nowadays, they remember that particular match in a particular tournament and how they played. And one girl recognized she played with me back in 2005 and I didn't even know I did. Then I started wondering why. I mean, do I even love that sport? Why did I quit? I mean, I had my reasons, but now I'm like, are they authentic? Like, what was I giving some a facade kind of reasons or did I actually feel it, you know? Um, so, so what I did was I started playing again. And, and the few players and the coaches here told me that as long as I'm on court, I'm very disciplined. Like I'm serious. If I'm not into it, then I'm not on court. I have a certain yeah. respect for the sport. At the same time, there is so much joy, which means now I'm learning about my past self that, okay, I did love the sport. So what are the things that I actually didn't like? What, what are those things that made me quit? That's one part. And the other part is, if I loved what I was doing, if I had dealt with these other things, would mm -hmm. I have gone a certain distance in the sport? You know, it was me dwelling into all this, then then feeling a little sad or or I wouldn't say regret, but that feeling that maybe I should have continued, maybe I should have had the right guidance, you know, feeling resentment, you know, about my decision or the situation, rather the circumstance of it all. So I'm dealing with a lot of that and, I'm telling myself that whatever reasons, however it turned out, you're here today. Let's say now you realize you love the sport. Play it at or, or communicate or, or let that be a part of your life in any way that it can be right now. You know, exactly. probably pass on the knowledge to the kids today or just play for fun, you know, just hit. So like it, it's not that it's roller coaster it's a big and this is just one topic of my life and oh my I gosh yes no no I was I was totally into it because I see a lot of myself and what you were saying right and coming to this point there's a lot of we judge up ourselves a lot in general yeah. you spoke about tennis I'm sure there's like a lot of different parts of you over time that you've judged we do that it's a tendency but from this space that you're in now, we, we can still love, we, we must, we should learn to love our past selves because they were there to, Prachi in the previous timeline or like that timeline was, was also there to learn something, to teach something. Like everything in this journey that has brought you here today, it's all happened in divine timing. And divine timing is nothing but like that alignment, that learning process, right? It's not like magically like coded somewhere like someone. <laughs> but it's made you who you are today. And, and it's such a beautiful, you know, right. inside and out. Like, um, so, but I love the self-discovery process. It's just like, yeah. it's like unweaving the different threads of who you are. And where they came from and there's so many threads and so many places and so many experiences situations people um that you deal with on a daily basis that make this version of you and that's changing every day again so it's just so interesting that we are so interesting <laughs> as humans in this world like the digging in process into yourself i feel like it's never ending every day i learn something new about my previous decisions or myself or the way i behave yeah. How, how was like, um, how did you dig into yourself? Like there must've been a lot of ghosts and, and dirt and dust and whatnot. So also, I mean, even, even communicating with yourself, I'm pretty sure your def defensive mechanism or, or the ego protects your, 
you know, in ourselves and says, hey, no. But then how do you recognize your patterns or what you were doing or what the, the root cause of a certain emotion? Did you do therapy or it's research or the spiritual journey you've been through? How did you know how to dig or how to ask yourself the right questions to get to the root cause, basically? Mm, so I feel like it was a lot of, uh, it was, I have many people to thank and <laughs> including myself uh, for this because yourself, because I had to be willing to see. Of course, of course. So it always starts there. Uh, I worked with, uh, as I mentioned, a couple of people, uh, my friend who's the energetic therapist that I spoke of. Spoke of. Um, so basically to dig into my or my childhood traumas and we we term them traumas it's basically our day-to-day experiences that created us like our situations um that we dealt with conditioning we have so much conditioning in in all of us um so i really had to look at started off with the patterns working my way backwards right like what is it that's happening okay i dealt with a heartbreak cool uh how am i feeling in this moment what happened why am I clinging on to this situation, right? Uh, okay, I realized that I just wanted to, I just wanted to have that in my life and I didn't have a reason. I was like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. So then uh, what if that part of me is taken away from me? Then, then how do I feel? Okay, I feel lonely. I feel abandoned. I feel empty. So you see two, two themes here with different people and this i'm not talking about romantic relationship i'm talking about any relationship um what happens here is that i realized that i was like meeting people where they were at so the people pleaser in me you know because i wanted them so so badly to stay in my life that i would do anything but why was i doing that because when that part of me was taken away from me then i would feel abandoned and lonely so I'm like, oh, okay. So then we did like a couple like different energetic like meditations to figure out where is this abandonment really coming from? And you know, at a subconscious level, you know, all you need to do is be willing to see. So you really literally just ask yourself, like I would just ask myself, where is this coming from? Honestly, you don't even need to know. Like, I don't believe that you need to know where every single trauma came from. If you want to, that's different because then you're just like wanting to figure out what what caused this, you know? Do you need to know where exactly, what date it was, where it came from? No, I don't think so. Because as long as you know what it is, like, oh, I've noticed this is fear of abandonment. Why? Because there's deep like sadness in me. There's deep uh, sadness about situations that had happened that led to this fear of abandonment. And now that led to the people pleaser and that's leading to these different patterns that this hard code in my brain, literally at the neural level. Okay, now I see why my reality looks the way it is, at least in this respect, in this, in this um, specific segment. So, okay, can I work with that fear? What do I need to do? Address the first emotion, sadness. I need to address the sadness first. There's something inside of me that's deeply sad and broken. So I need to work with that part she first and then when you do that on the inside with that specific emotion as I mentioned through those meditations that I did and like all this other all this other work that I did uh it's a it's like a trickle trickle down effect so I'm dealing with the sadness but the I'm not feeling that fear of abandonment anymore if I'm not feeling that fear then I don't need to please people which means I'm more comfortable in myself which means that you know I can truly let go of whatever's not serving me so it's like recognizing and, one of your patterns and connecting it to one of your previous traumas is like the eureka moment yeah exactly and and when you say trauma it's that emotion or that feeling or whatever it is that right. energetically Before right i was aware of these things i used to think trauma was like some huge thing you know exactly yeah i mean now i realize i probably had like a million traumas so <laughs> exactly and it could be something as simple as like someone like you getting you know dressed up and someone saying oh please don't wear sleeveless because your arms look fat true and it's like oh crap like am i like is this not okay and then you take that especially yeah till you actually deal with that uh emotion 
till then you're going to feel you're going to remember that sentence every time you wear sleeveless exactly and and sometimes you don't even remember the sentence but you're like, like this i don't know why i don't like this um but in inside that feeling of i'm not good enough i don't look good in this and that's what like is trickling down so the minute you go to that self doubt self the 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 fear the self worth stuff a lot of external stuff gets healed it's a process absolutely is like it's not a, an overnight thing it's not even like a couple of days or weeks thing it's uh, it's like years on years of just like knowing yourself but this is also a form of self love like investing time in knowing yourself you know literally like spending time with yourself but yeah once you address the the inner emotion whatever it is like self worth self doubt sadness anger then it starts trickling out into your being and also into others in your life because now you are changing you're growing that changes your energetic field and that's going to affect whoever is in your life on a day to day and i've seen that personally happen you don't have to ask them to change no and that's absolutely not something you should do ever anyway <laughs> i feel like an awareness is like um having an opinion about you based on others opinions about you you know rather than having your own emotions to yourself um is that a good please wait having uh, yeah even even it it sounds weird putting it into words sometimes these kind of things but let me try again i think unaware people look at mm-hmm. themselves through the eyes of others basically through others yeah. opinions you know yeah yeah because a part of them believes that to be true otherwise there's no way because if i was so sure in myself i would know that it doesn't belong to me and that means that i would look at that situation through my own eyes as you said like not through their eyes but through my own eyes but if you do look at other people and if like other people say something to you when you get triggered or get upset angry whatever it is that means that a part of you believes it to be true and this can be true in the negative and quote quote negative and positive way like if someone tells you you look amazing and you feel good you actually feel good you're like great i believe that i look great <laughs> you know sure yeah. but more often than not we find it so hard to take compliments yeah. it's like oh do i like are you sure okay, one good? more point i feel like a lot of it for a lot of us it's easy at least when you know we weren't aware it's so easy to believe the negative stuff you know if somebody says you look bad it's so easy to believe that and that sticks with us like, yeah. compliments don't stick with us at all yeah because you don't believe in that part of you and you have the same question and the same worry and the same doubt so unless you address that yeah. it's always going to reflect on your outside uh which is really sad because all of this is just generational conditioning from everywhere um you know culture society uh individual family norms you know because of our conditioning and norms uh like you said in the beginning we we put a lot of facade around us and we're not really fully authentic you know the way we yeah. post on social media or or portray our family or ourselves in front of other people so now when you're trying to be as authentic as you can everywhere um how did that feeling of oh my god they're going to judge what i'm writing now or or a comment or a tag or whatever it is you know, or or talking oh. in the family how did that feeling slowly start um dying down if it did or do you have <laughs> Yeah, it it comes up from time to time. I was so scared of being judged uh when I started seeing the shift in my own social media because before this I was like posting mindlessly. I mean, and then I was like, you know what? I want to use my platform to be myself. Um and there were many types of reactions. Some people thought I was being fake. Uh that didn't bother me because i was so sure of the fact that i wasn't being fake i was like well i'm not fake i know that yeah. so does this bother me not much uh and by this point in my journey i'm already at the place where i can look at things objectively if they think i'm fake well they're not ready for me in that moment and that's okay nobody has to be on the same page 
uh, is me at all times. So did it hurt? Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of reactions like, what are you like, what are you into these days? A lot of people expected me to be the way I was when I was 18. And I'm like, well, I asked myself those questions, right? So when I got those reactions, um, instead of reacting myself, like just reacting to what they said, took a second because I'm like, okay, I don't want to react to this. I want to respond to this, you know? So, okay, this person called me fake or this person said like, what are you into? Like, it's so weird. I've been called weird a thousand times. I harp is that I'm too. <laughs> so I looked at it and he said, what part of this do I believe to be true? I know I'm not fake. I know I'm being authentic. I know what my goal is with my social media at this point. I know what I want to be. Then why is this bothering me? Okay, this is bothering me because I consider this person to be a friend. Um, but that's when the, the trusting and the awareness of like being on different paths in a journey, a different journeys themselves uh, came, to, came to mind. So I said, okay, it's okay. People reject things a lot faster when they don't understand them. They don't want to understand them. I, I, I got told a lot that my social media didn't make so sense. Where we talk about our ego protecting us from the things that we are not aware about. So it's probably yeah. their ego protecting them, uh, them from going out of their comfort zone. Exactly. Understanding anything exactly. that they don't know about. Yeah. Bang on, spot on, 100% right. So it's like you come with that awareness and then you realize, you know, like, like, well, this person's rejecting me and my opinion because they don't understand it. And maybe we, if they had taken the time to understand me, then we would be in a mutual place where we're like, okay, I don't quite get you, but we're cool. You know, some people who do do that, who do end up doing that, end up staying in your lives. Um, are all my close friends on the same page as I am? No. Do they understand? Sometimes they're like, oh, wow, this is just like not in my interest. And that's okay. We can still coexist because there's mutual respect and understanding of like, okay, cool. You know what? We're a little bit different here. <laughs> that's okay. But then the people who are not on that page who are like, you know what? I don't even want to take the time to understand you. Those are the people that fall away. But then if someone's not showing that interest to understand you, who doesn't want to invest that time in understanding you, is it even worth spending time? to try to keep them in your life it's it's not i mean it, it used to be in my books the people pleaser but then now i'm like no we can mutually send love to each other from a distance and and you know that's it um so the people who are meant to read them end up reading them I get, I've reconnected with a lot of people who end up saying like, oh, I like your post. And I'm like, thank you so much for saying that because I do actually appreciate that. Like, <laughs> um, and then there's other people who, who like said other things and I'm just like, well, sorry, it didn't resonate. Like, I don't say sorry. I stopped saying sorry. Sorry is like, I'm trying to get that out. Like, I'm not apologetic for being myself. So I just say, great. Thanks for letting me know that it didn't resonate. I, I what do they respond to that yeah i can so relate because even this podcast or putting these videos out there or the poems i write um initially i was like you know people are gonna judge me they're like what this is this girl is doing all weird ass things nowadays but then i told myself the why you know you were previously talking about uh, before you didn't know why you were doing certain things you know you were just mindlessly doing uh, i don't know if you've heard about simon sinek i i love his theories and he was talking about uh finding out the why you know, behind every decision of yours or every action of yours. At the time, I didn't really uh, listen to that. But then my own uh, version of telling myself why I want to do the podcast, why, why do I want to talk to people? So I answered to myself that I have been very lost for a good amount of the last 10 to 12 years. Yes. Um, there may be millions of others going through this. Um, what, what if, and, and it's the pain, right? Pain recognizes pain. So I, I don't want anybody else to go through that pain. So if at least one person who's, who's in pain comes across one of these random videos and gives a different perspective to that person's growth or life or ideology, whatever, I think that's a win for me. And, yeah. and why do I care about these people who are not in pain, who are unaware, who may judge me? Why am I caring about these people? you worry about giving some sort of comfort to an unknown source of pain. So that was the answer I came up with. And then I'm like, let's do this. If people are willing to talk to me, if they want to have a good conversation, why not? I'm not even, you know, like 
uh, running behind people for their appointment or time or anything. It's like you, you know, if you're interested, let's have this. I mean, let's do this. It, it exactly right. And that's when the people who are meant to, you know, come here, have these conversations with you. Uh, it, it just happens. You don't have to force it. The people who end up watching these videos and like spending time listening to these conversations, um, it just, they're meant to do that in that moment because everyone who's doing that is getting something out of it. Uh, every single person, whether they know it or not. Mm-hmm. Most of the people who get uh, upset or triggered by like looking at not just your videos, but upset or triggered isn't like, you know, judge them or whatever it is. Um, a lot of times they're the ones that are denying that in them. Like I admire you for having these conversations and putting it out there. I admire people who do like live videos because I haven't had the guts to do that yet. Like live it's, it's, is more scary. I mean, this I think. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> live, like I've never, I've never done a live. I've done a live of like showing people like views and stuff, but I have never been able to go up there and say that. So when I look at somebody else and I say, wow, that person's like, like so capable of doing, that's the part of me that I've been denying that I see in the other person. So like, it's kind of my calling to tap into myself in that, in that segment. So that's what I've started also keeping in mind. When I look at another person at this point and I say, I love that. I want, I want that. I want to be like that. It's probably a part of myself that I've been denying either knowingly or unknowingly but it has to be within me for me to be able to recognize it it's like if a person doesn't know the color blue they're just not going to recognize it you know yeah so you have to have that within you to be able to see it outside uh and mostly people who are judging you are judging themselves yeah and and a lot of conditioning within us is growing up selfish the word selfish is is made out to be such a negative word right this i've heard in a podcast where matthew mcconaughey was talking and it resonated so much with me it was like one of those aha moments right okay selfish is not negative it's like i don't know if he explained it or it's my um perspective of what he said i took it like you know uh, selfish is like self-care and self-love taking care of yourself without doing any harm onto others yeah and then i'm like why do people talk about the word ego the word selfish in such a negative tone yeah these are all my realizations in in this journey and 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 a regular person will will genuinely be bored of this i know that for a fact you know who's not interested in these conversations it's all good um it's a part of it and and I, I want to quote my friend, my dear friend Ananta, who said this, but she said there's a difference between being self-centered and like uh, centered in the self. Yeah. So when we're on this journey, when we're doing the self-love, self-care, all of that stuff and staying in that power center that we spoke about before, like staying here and from here, like you meet people, that is you being centered in yourself self-centered is when you're like fully like me myself and I and that's all that matters and that's why you're you're not harming others but like you know everything like the world revolves around me like that's that's a little bit different energetically so I 100% agree with you though selfish like the word has a negative connotation because of conditioning uh even ego egos are a friend like in healthy quantities (laughs) (laughs) What's like the biggest um, um, lesson or, or something that, that you really stuck with one point through this entire journey? That everything in my life starts with the self because without the self, I am not and I'm not experiencing nor observing nor perceiving. I'm not doing anything and the entire world is a reflection of who I am on the inside because that's my lens through which I observe the world so if something bothers me on the outside I first need to look within that was very important because it's easy in this world when I see something I don't like 
no matter what it is. Uh, it's easy to say, oh God, that person's being narcissistic. That person's being X, Y, and Z. But there is something in there for me to, to learn. Like I need to go within and see what is it about that that is bothering me? Where is this coming from? So really weaving those wounds, like uh, uh, threads back to myself and seeing what I asking, really asking the question, like, what do I need to see in this situation? Why is this happening? Why is this coming? Because the world, if the world is a reflection of myself, who, am I, who I am on the inside, and if this is showing up in my life, then it serves a purpose. That means that I need to see something. So, because it's a law, right? Like once you believe that the world is a mirror of yourself, then you can't back away from it saying, no, no, like sometimes it's not though. <laughs> so it always goes back to that introspection and seeing why that thing showed up. That yeah, stop, stops wrong. blame when towards others. <laughs> so, yeah. I think I, I know which I know we are getting at we're tapped in the same field at this point, but you're saying basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, but basically your responses to situations are from based on your beliefs and who you are on the inside. And in that exact same way, another person's reaction to you or response to you is based on their beliefs and their thing. So actually it's never personal. So even if someone judges you, it's not about you. It's about what they believe in that is maybe not on the same page as you are and that's fine yeah. but when you're aware of that like oh it's not about me yeah. then you don't take it personally and you're like okay cool it doesn't matter you know those are the big misunderstandings right if somebody says something you take it personally i mean and that's where the whole um you know the roller coaster starts so yeah, yeah. give me a lot because we don't yeah sorry yeah i said we don't realize that all this is just the world that we've created is so different to me than it is to you. I mean, the world that you've created is super different, probably. And every other person has their own world, even if the people and the characters are the same. So when you realize that it's it's not a fact, it's not set in stone, everyone's is different. Yeah. That's when you're like, oh, maybe it's different in your world. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, you might be the best person to someone and like probably the worst person to someone else based on the experience that, you know, you all had together that you're co-created. So it's fine. That's how I see it. I would love to keep talking to you, but I, I think it's <laughs> a lot of your time. I have three questions that I want to ask yes. everybody at the end of this. Uh, what's the one word that resonates the most with you and why? Kindness. It always has. Um, if um kindness has been my word I was when I was looking for my purpose I was like you know I, I want to know why I'm here um I did this spe specific meditation and the word that came to my mind was kindness and I'm like wait what that sounds so basic it's like oh it's it's not saving humanity or something it was like sad in that moment but then I realized that kindness is like somehow it just resonates with the vibration of myself it is when I'm truly at my center it's who I am it's in I've and I, I did this via observation with all my interactions with people um and that is the word that I believe that if I'm living up to this vibration of kindness in any situation then again bring the career in the middle kindness in business how do bring kindness into business you know it's like a concept so um concept that I've never I've never put thought into before how do I bring kindness into every single thing that I do no matter what it is uh I think that's the essence of my being and that's what resonates the most with me and I have in I've taken time to integrate that actually in my life and see what results it brings me and I've seen many different changes happen um, in terms of the people who flow, you know, come back into my life, people who moved out of my life, uh, situations, I move cities. Um, I'm in the process of like doing a lot of different things. I'm, I'm chatting with you. And that is something that I've never done before, like a podcast. And that would have freaked me out like a year ago. <laughs> so there's so many different changes and that's all coming from 
me living my purpose, which is the word kindness. My purpose is the word kindness. Is, and it changes every day and all the time. But this word never changes for me. Amazing. I think I already know your answer to the next question. Uh, one thing you wish you had done differently? In, in Like now or like in life? Life, in hindsight. Hmm. Focus, pay more attention to myself. Mm. I, I feel like uh, I've started looking at all experiences in life as, uh, as like skits, little mini skits, you know, like tennis was like a part of it. And yeah. all these are like mini skits. Um, but it all started, I, I, I was always like looking outward and externally for everything, right? And the skits will change and the players will change, but like who you are never changes. I mean, the essence of who you are, the, the, the truth, not the personality, not the identity, none of that, like, you know, the inside. And I never paid attention to that. So everything that happened in my life was by chance, was by accident, was by, and nothing's an accident, but it was like a reflection of who I was in that moment. So I just feel like I'd paid more, if I'd paid more attention to myself, I would have saved myself or I would have actually been on a different journey. But you know what? Now that I come back to this thought, maybe maybe I, I didn't have to do anything differently. Uh, one advice that you think is important to everybody? Um, mm, what I kind of said, at the start but like invest time in yourself it's important to do that because that's where everything starts that's where you create everything from so everything that we're efforting to like you know action 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 it all starts from this one place of the center so if you spend time investing in that all these other investments that you make in your career in your family your kids your life everything it like trickles to them and it overflow like not overflows but it kind of like flows to them and through them and like envelops them in that same um loving beautiful work that you've done three maybe exactly so but a lot of times we're trying to force all this other stuff to, to work out but then it doesn't work out and that makes us upset so when you it's important to actually make time for yourself in that you actually block 30 minutes of your time every single day to spend time with yourself. Be kind to yourself because you spend, you would never be that mean to anybody else than why yourself, um, you know, and you're, you spend the most amount of time with yourself. So funny enough and, and cliched and whatever it is, but like it really starts with the self. Um, so it's important and everything that happens in your life happens for a reason, whether you see it now, or you don't, uh, but if you're investing in yourself, you will be able to figure out, um, or like carve that path for you. So I, I really think it just actually just comes back to the self. <laughs> I think I said that before. <laughs> Thank you so but, much, yeah. It was amazing. Like, I genuinely just love the conversation. Me too. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I've never, I've never spoken with anyone at length about this, like in such a setting. So thank you so much for um, chatting with me. It was so nice to just share perspectives and talk, talk out loud and just like, yeah. you know, uh, see how this right. is a part of the integration. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very good feeling. I, I don't know what adjective to use, but it feels great yeah it just um i don't know it's a sharing of the mutual uh lessons i think that use the word happy i think like this conversation did make me very happy yeah like it, it makes me happy as well um because you're actually not afraid you and i are not afraid of like speaking about this because this is our truth in this moment so yeah. uh trying to get to the best best version of ourselves trying to be as authentic as we can knowing that we still have to grow that we still have a lot to learn i think Always. <laughs> yeah. that never changes but authenticity is so important because 
when you're authentic, you're, you're being genuine to yourself and to others, because I mean, that's the best you can gift you can offer anyone, right? Is your true self, like who you are, uh, not a, not like a diluted version of you yeah. uh, or an adulterated version of you. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. For thank you. This. Hope you find all your breadcrumbs, connect them all together. <laughs> Have a nice sandwich, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope, I, I hope, I, I know I will. It's, it's so interesting to find the breadcrumbs along the way. I feel like a little Gretel from Hansel and Gretel, like, just like. <laughs> um, but a lot of kindness but, and positivity to you. Like, hope you're, you know, find yourself. Thank you so much. Sending you so much love. Um, thank you, Prachi.